Okay, this is Image Manager. Like we said before, Image Manager was designed to come in and verify your image files, re-verify them, and consolidate them to make sure that the dependency chain is as small as possible. We're going to cover all of the settings, and again, I want to point out one more time that when you install Image Manager with Shadow Protect, you are also installing Image Manager Enterprise, but it will require an activation to unlock the Enterprise features. I'm going to spend the next little bit and show you all of the Image Manager features, and then we're going to break into Image Manager Enterprise. For those of you who have used Image Manager in the past in version 3, we've made some considerable changes. The first thing you'll notice is we have a complete new interface for Image Manager 4.0. We also have notification and some reporting built into Image Manager as well. You can be emailed on failures. What is a failure? Anytime that Image Manager detects a problem with a verified image or a problem within your dependency chain, you will get an email. And activity, if you're expecting images from a particular machine every single day and they're no longer coming in, you might want to set this setting to 2. If no images come in for 2 days on that particular folder, you will get notified. Another cool setting is low free space. Now you can monitor with Image Manager how much drive space you have and set a threshold for an alert on an email. And then you can receive a daily summary and that'll let you know what's going on in the life of Image Manager on this machine as well. You can come in and add your SMTP server or your outgoing mail server to be able to send you those emails. So when you start using Image Manager, you want to tell it you want to start managing a particular folder. In this case, I am managing two folders, two servers. Shadow Protect is backing up to these locations, and so I want to verify and re-verify these images as they come in. So I've already set some of these settings up. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. On the Verify, we'll click the sprocket here, and I have the option to immediately verify new images when they're created. What this means is when we start managing a folder, we start watching it and watching for new files. When a new file pops in, Image Manager is going to come in and verify that image to make sure everything is okay with it. And then you can tell it to periodically re-verify the existing chain, every single image within this folder. So you can set it for four days and every four days it will come in and re-verify. And if anything is broken, you will receive an email if you set up the notification settings as well. The consolidation. You only need to use the consolidation when you're using the continuous incremental job out of Shadow Protect. We'll click on the sprocket. For those of you who know how to set up Image Manager, this will look familiar. There is a new option, however, and I'll get to this in just a second. I want to take just a minute and explain a little bit about what's going on with your continuous incremental and the consolidation of that chain. Every single day when you're coming in and you're taking backups, let's say you're taking every hour on the hour and you're getting 10 backups a day. These are called intradailies here in this step. So what happens is each time that you take a backup, as we said before, your chain's going to grow. You take 10 backups a day for 100 days, you now have 1,000 files in your dependency chain. That's way too many. So Image Manager will come in every single day and create what we call a consolidated daily or a collapse daily. So it will take data from the incrementals that are happening every hour on the hour and it will copy enough data down to a collapse daily file to reduce the dependency chain to one. Those incremental files that you took every hour on the hour are still there. They're still valid. You can still mount them, drag files and folders out. You can still right mouse click it and virtual boot it. You can still pick it for a restore. The difference is, is they're no longer dependent because the dependency chain has been shifted to the collapse daily. So if you wanted to, you can set up a retention policy on this and say, okay, seven days after the collapse, we're going to go ahead and get rid of these files and get them off the system. So what this means is you need to ask yourself, how far back do you want to get to every hour on the hour before the end of the day is okay? If that answer is, wow, a week from now, I really don't care if I can get to the every hour on the hour. I only care if I can get to the end of the day. Then we can set this for seven days. So seven days after they have been collapsed, they will be deleted. Now the consolidated dailies or the collapse dailies Seven days after they have been collapsed into a collapse daily, so every day we're getting a collapse daily, 
Image Manager is going to take and reduce the dependency chain one more time, which means is it's going to take and copy enough data out of these seven dailies to create a collapsed weekly. So again, we've gone from 10 files a day down to one, from seven files a week down to one file a week that is now in my dependency chain. Again, these collapsed dailies, just like the incrementals, can, they can be mounted, they can be virtual booted, you can choose them to do a restore. Again, they're just no longer needed because then we're reducing that dependency chain to be as small as possible. So now you ask yourself a question, how long is it before the end of the day is okay before the end of the week is okay. And if two weeks out, 14 days is okay, then you can say, all right, 14 days after it's been collapsed, these will be deleted. We do this one more time. After four collapsed weeklies, we will create a collapsed monthly file, reducing the dependency chain for the last time. And then you can ask yourself that same question, how many days is the end of the week okay versus end of the month? Now, this new feature down here. In the past, when we were working with Image Manager, the collapsed dailies and collapsed weeklies never would delete off the system, just for safe sake. In case you had problems with your dependency chain in the main folder, you could suck these files out of a subfolder and put them back and restore your dependency chain. But now that we have notification, we have verification, and we have replication, we can feel confident that instead of moving these to a subfolder, which was the default before, you can now delete these collapsed dailies and get them off the system as well. If this isn't clear right now, check back for another video on how to set up continuous incrementals and the collapsed dailies, and it'll be very technical and very detailed. Some other options that we have here is you can now tell Image Manager when you would like that consolidated weekly image to happen. If you're backing up incrementals Monday through Friday and you want your collapsed weekly to happen on Saturday, then you can truly have a end of the week collapsed weekly. Same with the monthly. On the monthly file, you can choose what specific day you would like that collapsed monthly to happen. In this case, the end of the month, I think is a good option. Please note that if you leave it 31, that's always going to be the last day of the month. Even if it's February or a leap year or a month with 30, if you leave it 31, it will always trigger on the last day of the month. Another quick little feature here is the backup images status and details. This is just a quick peek into what's going on with your backup job that's in this folder. Let's take a look at Potter here. And we can see a list of all of the incrementals that happened on that particular day. If I want to look at the day before, I can do that. I can just select each individual image and see how big it is, the method that was used to create it. This is just a sneak peek to what's going on into your backup job. If you start to see the file size of your incrementals grow, now you can get into a simple interface and find out what time of day that that's happening. And then maybe you can check the event logs and such of that machine to see what's going on.